Hello, my name is Chris Hawthorne and I'm a licensed lay leader to St Anna's Church, Chasetown, and I have with me my wife Stella. So a warm welcome to you for this autumn's Bible study topic, the heading for which is What Are We Living For? And this week we're going to be talking about What Are We Living For? Peace. So Stella, my mum would often say, I just need a bit of P and Q. What do you think she meant by that? Well, yeah. Uh, my gran used to say that as well because she used to look after me whilst mum was at work. Um, by the afternoon she'd always say, right, P and Q time now. And I, I had to be quiet while she listened to the play in the afternoon and set the side. So, yes, I know that phrase well. Oh, gosh, P and Q. I think life is hectic for many people and, and it's hectic for... Um, many people who have got to go to work and fit in with paying the bills and looking after the children and looking after the house certainly if you've got a family um, it's very difficult to find time to set aside for yourself sometimes but I think it's a very individual thing um, because some people might be very lonely um, and be, feel very isolated or struggling with illnesses. Um, I think it, everybody's got a different, a different situation, but that doesn't necessarily mean that any of us find peace easy, whatever our situation is. Um, but you've asked me what it is for me. I think for me, peace and quiet is, is difficult to find. I'm forever thinking, what have I got to do next? And I'm sure a lot, a lot of... Uh, women and men as well, um, will, will identify with that. And I think life is getting more hectic in some ways than it was for my gram. I think also there's a lot more interruptions with new technology. Uh, the phone can be ringing in a way. My gram just, just had a, a, a landline, um, which will go occasionally, but now uh, with smartphones uh, and PCs that we're doing and, and the news now which was only on a little bit keeps being thrown at us um, and it's not always good with we're, we're, we're thrown about climate change and there's Putin at the moment there's so many things for us to even if we're trying to relax um, our peace my peace of mind sometimes can be interrupted by you know, are the children going to be all right? I've got to be so to a certain place in a certain time. Uh, and then I get them to sit down and put on the news and think, oh, my goodness, what's going on? So it's not always easy to find there's different kinds of peace. There's, there's peace where we can just sit and relax. But there's also peace of heart and there's peace of mind. Mm. And I think nowadays, probably with the glo a global information thrown at us and communication on top of all the daily worries of how we're going to pay the bills, prices going up in the shops, get the children. Um, I, I think it's harder nowadays. Well, yeah. thank you for, for sharing those thoughts and ideas on uh, different aspects of peace and the, the notion of an inner peace uh, and the battle between that and the uh, outer world is, is, is a good one. And when, as you say, when we switch on the TV, we're, we're constantly hearing about the rising of the cost of living while you pray. So how does being a Christian help you to find peace? Oh, goodness. Well, like, again, I think I can only, I can only speak for myself, really. Um, gosh. The question is, what, what are we living for that we're studying over the next few weeks? Um, and I didn't ask to come into this world, but I'm here. Um, I think for me, um, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and life. And I see this world as a learning ground where we get so many things wrong. And we have to deal with all sorts of different issues, which I've just briefly mentioned. Family tensions um, as well come in. And I look at Jesus and I see he got disciples that were always getting it wrong not understanding what he was trying to tell them. he got people hassling all the time to be one from following him. Um, he knew that he was going to eventually die. And I'm not going to say that he never got anxious, because he did, and I think he shared that with us. But I, I feel 
for me as a Christian, he is the way, the map through this world with all its tensions. And I look at how he dealt with it. Um, and he'd often go and draw aside mm -hmm. after he'd be, had crowds after him up onto a mountain. Uh, he said, I've got food that you don't know of. And I think that was food was his relationship with God. He's, he, he did tell us we're, in this world we're going to have troubles. And, that, and I think people think, oh, well, uh, any Christians that, that preach that... Um, you know, everything's going to be fine once you're, you're, you're a Christian. It's not. It's just, it's, we're just like everybody else. But I think he shows a way through it. Um, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was terrified, but he prayed. And he tells us to, to, to go, step aside um, and withdraw sometimes. Make that space to remember that God really is a reality. And I, I also think if... if the world was a, would be a peaceful place and we wouldn't have the trouble with climate change or, or whatever. I think we would have peace of mind and heart if we actually um, followed the things he taught us how to, how to behave towards one another. If he taught us about love and forgiveness and striving to have that relationship with each other of love and with God. I don't think the world would be in the state it is now, but it wasn't for Jesus either. And you've got to be real in this world. So... Yeah, um, I think very much for me, um, Jesus is, is, is my map and my way to cope with a lot of things. There are times I shout at God, I'm very human, like everybody, what are you playing at and why are you lying this? But I do have that sure, certain hope that when everything was desolate in Jesus' life, actually all was well in the end and he showed us the way through. So we can grow into more wholeness, that we can learn by our mistakes. We can, we can learn by listening to him and become more human and the way I think God wants us to be. Um, I think we start off in this life like in a kindergarten and it's a place where he wants us to grow with God leading us on uh, and giving us Jesus as that way. So yeah, towards, if you like, a more whole person and I'm far from it at the moment. So yeah. As I think, in fact, we all yeah. probably, yeah. Uh, indeed. Well, we've certainly covered a lot of ground uh, through the thoughts that you've, you've shared, and, and thank you very much for, for doing that. Uh, the, the issue of, well, the thoughts about inner peace possibly coming through prayer, because mm -hmm. the, the outer peace of the world is, you know, the world isn't going to be peaceful. You might find a, a bit of P&Q on your holiday, you know, but ultimately... Uh, the world is not a peaceful place. The issues of inner peace are, are important for many, many people, and there are many people who struggle with their inner peace. Mm. And the idea that prayer is a way of, of finding that is, is a, an important and useful uh, But also, I think um, the scriptures, if you, I, I would just say to anybody, read Matthew or John, don't read all the Bible, just read the teaching of Jesus, even in the Sermon on the Mount, and, and, and who he was in, in the Gospel of John. Um, and those words can just really give you an inner peace because Jesus actually talks about all the situations that that um, we're all dealing with today, even more so today. Um, he was in a time of trouble and we're in a time of trouble and he overcame. And he said, whoever comes to me, I'll give you peace. Not the world gives peace, um, but it's a different peace. And that's my hope. And that I, I often fall short with my faith. Um, but I will always cling on to that and lift myself back up to Absolutely. Well, I hope you've found some of our thoughts, some of Stella's thoughts, helpful uh, and thought-provoking. Uh, our Bible study discussion groups will continue next week on Monday afternoon in the choir vestry of St Anne's Church. Uh, we will be meeting round about half past one. Uh, and on Tuesday evening, there are two different groups. Uh, if you want to join us for a Zoom meeting uh, via your tablet or your laptop, um, then that is a possibility at half past seven. And the link for that Zoom meeting can be found on St Anne's Church webpage. And the Bible study group that meets at the home of Brian and Sue Goldie will also be meeting uh, on the Tuesday evening. And both of those will begin around about 7.30. So thank you to Stella for her sharing her thoughts about that. Uh, there will be questions for the 
discussion groups and those will be available also on the St Thomas Church website uh, in the next day or two. Uh, if you're not able to join us, well, you're welcome to look at those questions if they help you and you want to take your thoughts about peace a little bit further. So we'll end with a prayer. Father God, you said, blessed are the peacemakers. And many, many people are striving for and struggling for peace. We pray that your peace will be with us today, tomorrow, and that you will help us to be agents for a more peaceful and caring world. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye.